Welcome back everyone. Today we are getting two things done. I'm gonna go fly fish for largemouth bass and crossroads. And then when we're done, we're gonna pull the motors, take all the supplies back to camp. So let's get going. growing as we speak and I am just starting with a uh, starting with my blue pink Bowser fish on I'm fishing this log called rat log and it's called rat log whoa there's one of my guests man tied uh, these beautiful rats and uh, wanted to catch a fish on the fly top water with his rats so Took him here because the top water action was hot earlier in the day, and sure enough, he caught a bass first cast on the rat. So, and uh, as you can see, I'm not fishing top water yet. I have <laughs> with the line in my bag, I just figured I'd finish all my subsurface stuff first and then change that over. Change that over, whoa, for the last cast. So, these fish fight like crazy, these largemouths out uh, here on crossroad it's just like nothing nothing like the other lakes these are obviously very well fed and extremely grumpy like look at this fishing with my seven weight uh shout out to my guest ed thank you so much for sending me this rod because i broke my other one and he sent me this one so check it out nice bit of fatty here some wheels on it See, I just changed my clouser over. I missed two fish, and so I so I changed my clouser to a brand new one. Did the trick. Beautiful. Just take my glasses off here. Beautiful first fish. Sassy girl. Get her back. Fly fishing's really fun because if I was gear fishing, I probably wouldn't bat an eye. But check out that fight. That was just unreal. And and uh, we're gonna go try to do it again. As much as it is a pain in the butt to have kind of everything going on when you're fly fishing, it's so much easier just driving the boat, putting yourself right on those spots that you want them. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. A little bit bigger than the last one. Gorgeous fish. I love these pink and purple clouses I made. Okay, we're gonna try to get another one. Fish are deep right now, eight to 12 feet. I'm using a sinking line. Oh, I just missed one. Using a sinking line and just let, let my clouds get right down there. Try to take my time between strips. on there we go beautiful missed them the first time but stuck on the second Woo! line puller that's fun so you see the fish trying to return to home trying to go back under that log there i don't want that to happen because i don't want her to get wrapped up on a branch or something like that loop around the log just kind of kicking my 
butt right now, but that's okay. Oh yeah, this is a heavy fish. That awkward lighting right now that's layered on the water and you get some sun, it's we got some smoke from the forest fires and so it's uh, kind of muggy and, 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 and foggy and smoggy, but still somewhat bright if that makes sense. So visibility is at a negative five, but when you're fishing deep like this, you don't need to see anything, you just feel it. So fly fishing is really fun because it does not take a million bucks to get into, contrary to popular belief. I got into fly fishing by buying a, uh, <laughs> just trying to keep them out from that log. I got into fly fishing by buying a $25 combo from Canadian Tire that I was able to, uh, oh, look at this fish, that I was able to learn and practice on in the backyard and slowly as time went on, I was able to whoo, learn more and want to do more and look at that beautiful fish. Wow, no wonder she kicked my butt. She's a beauty. Check it out. Gorgeous. And uh, I tied these flies on a $15 vise. I got a nicer one for my birthday. Thanks, Carol. But like I said, you don't need to go crazy with it. Look how much fun we're having. That's a fat girl. That's a nice fish. Oh, carpal kind of wants that one. Look at her go. Beautiful. Crazy how majority of these fish are hitting right beside the boat. Oh! As you can see, I position myself a little bit better this time. So I can just drag them right away from the log and I don't have catastrophe 2.0, catastrophe 1.0, we all just witnessed. Tell me in the comments if you think that technically counts as landing the fish. You know, I touched it. I didn't grab it, but I touched it. But you let me know if that counts. After all that, it doesn't count. Look at these fish bite. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Got the old mangrove just bent right over. Hold the boat a little bit. Got a bit of grass on there too. Check it out, beautiful fish. Bit of green, like I said, bit of greenery on there. Grab her. There is obviously a pretty nice size school underneath rat log, and the average is pretty nice as well. I'd say 15, 16 inches on this one. So. Absolutely not bad. I bet you'll probably pull another one or two out of there before we move on. Oh, look at the lips. Got a bit of an infection here. Oh, very gnarly infection. It can be a bit of a pain in the butt, as you can see, kind of all over the place, trying to position the bow, trying to, you know, entangle my line. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, it just makes you more patient and better angler, honestly. Even though it can be frustrating. There you go, fish on. Even though it definitely can be frustrating, it will, at the end of the day, make you a better angler. We got a bass on. She just jumped. And she's still on, so hopefully that hooks out with a good one. This log is just producing, so what it is is rat log is just right on the edge of a nice rocky transition over a really deep weed bed. So these fish are actually not as much under the log as they are kind of on the transition, but some of them will be coming up under the log uh, and some of them will be coming down the weed bed kind of just exchanging spots. So I'm just hitting them up both opportunities, whoop, under the log. And on the deep transition, look at what these fish bite like. Just absolutely wild, man. Crazy. Just crazy. Like I 
weights. I'm using a seven weight. Definitely an eight weight or a nine weight would have been nice. Um, uh, but we're only down to one rod at this point in time, so this is what we got. But it is definitely a fun fight. Just they kick my butt, that's all. Especially when they accumulate some weed. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Lady right in the corner of the lip. Lady, look at that. Beautiful. Another gorgeous largemouth. Alright, so beautiful fish, just going to throw her back, and like I said before, if I was on gear, minus top water, bass like this kind of wouldn't really get me that excited, wouldn't target them, really wouldn't, wouldn't be my cup of tea, but on this old pixie stick, this is fun, like on the fly rod, it turns something that's pretty mundane into something that's pretty fun, so I love it. And that is no diss to bass guys. I used to be the biggest bass guy ever. I just kind of have little other things I like to do at this point in time, you know? Like I said, on the fly is really fun though. Actually, uh, when I was with the new fly fisher with Jenna, we had this fish. We caught this one, I believe. We'll have to compare notes. And I cleaned up her wound a bit, and look how beautiful that looks now. We'll have to compare notes, but I'm 99% sure. Cool, eh, Jenna? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's gotta be her. See this weed here that we're fishing? It's really thin and wiry, it's called sago weed, produces a lot of cover down there, and uh, what do we think, one more cast or should we move on to the next spot? Move on? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> That's the update, we're going to the next spot. are hard because they can just bury themselves in the weeds and pull themselves off. <laughs> Getting burns on my hands. I'm going to 
gonna have to switch to fighting them like this. It's starting to get a little rug burn on the hands. I'm not ready for this kind of action today. Look at this fish. Just beautiful. As you can see when I'm transferring my hand up, I'm pinching my line at the same time. Then I'm able to drag that fish way closer. Everything is so tall and long when you're fly fishing. Tiny fish put up a fight like that. Would you believe it? Good game. All right. Here you go. Let's try this again. beside the boat. Let me change the direction a bit. Okay. Get a rug burn so I can change over here a bit. Out of the weed, kick my butt way, way back in. <laughs> the beetle's on her. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> That's what I mean about is your patient. Luckily, she probably feel the weight of all this weed because she's not moving. Look at that beautiful fish. Just gorgeous. Nice and thick. So, what do you think? I think this might commence our deep water fishing segment. I think it's time to put on that top water line and see if they're going to hit that or what. I opened my box to realize that the line that I brought with me is not. I opened the box to realize that the line I brought with me is not what I was wanting. But that's all right. They're hitting this closet so good, so might as well stick with it working. And uh, oh. So anyway, we're back to uh, rat log, kind of where we started. We don't have a crazy amount of time to fish in here today, so I just figured I'd hit up this really good spot a few more times, and then we'll start carrying all this stuff back into camp. Check it out. Oh, she's in there. She's going nowhere. Check it out. Beautiful fish. Gorgeous. I think it was the exact one I caught 10 fish ago. That's the same. Ugh. Perfect. They're all pretty cookie cutter in here. When you hear people say the term cookie cutter, that means they're all pretty well the same. Same size, the same looking fish. That's what that term means. But when they're fighting like that, I don't really mind cookie cutters in that size and still trying to find that one big kind of 19 20 inches oh she's a jumper tail dancer got a nice large mouth from rat log
surfers and swim under there and see how many bass are under there. I could, have, could not even imagine how many fish are there. Fish is kicking my butt as they all. Try to switch this boat around this wind's kind of changing a bit. Flip it over the head this way. cotton candy clouds are this time. I switched it up from the uh, purple and pink over to my, I call this one the cotton candy for obvious reasons, pink and blue. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful. All right, I'm thinking that I'm gonna go for one more and then we should probably call it a day. Still have a lot of work to do and this is not supposed to be an all day ordeal. So one more and then we'll get out of here and. All this stuff you see here has to be carried back to the camp, including the motor. Luckily not the boat, but everything but the boat. So we have a bit of carrying ahead of ourselves. Let's see how fast this last one will be. Typically the last fish can either be super quick or it can be an absolute drag. Absolute drag. Never get that one last one. I missed them, see? Uh-oh, better not be a drag. I'm not paying attention. Fish on, there we go. I was paying attention that time, kind of. Still half sleeping, but this one's spitzly, crazy. I know I said one more fish, but I think maybe one more, one more fish. Then we'll go. have a lot of stuff to do still at camp um we definitely uh, as much as i would love to can allocate a whole day for this um uh, we got kind of what we needed now we got to get going unfortunately so uh that being said i'm just going to kind of quickly tear this down a little bit and clean up and we're going to have to start taking all of this stuff not just our fishing stuff but the gas tanks and the seats and all that stuff we're gonna have to start carrying it all back to camp so I'm um, gonna try to break this down the best I the best I can to be able to maybe just even throw it on the side of my bag or something and then have a handful for a gas tank and paddle or seat so thanks for watching if you guys have any questions about fly fishing you want to get into it you know whatever send me a message or uh, write a comment in the comments below and I'll be sure to get Daryl to direct them to me so I can answer them but I highly recommend if you're a gear fisherman definitely go pick up a cheaper combo and give it a try it really changes the way you perceive fish and fishing all together and what a fun way to spend an afternoon so that's a wrap we're gonna get moving and thanks for watching <laughs>